I do believe it's working. I'm going to beguile you with a song you've never heard me sing before. Hi, Fertufa, where the wind blows gently across the plains. I don't like musicals either. But anyway, did a Hypertufa project last night. And Hypertufa doesn't mean the Tufa drank too much coffee. It is a it is a form of concrete in a way that mimics a stone called tufa that is used to make planters in various parts of the UK. And so let me let me start at the beginning. You can use anything for a mold because you pack it like clay. When you mix your more or less equal parts of peat moss, which you have to sift, you have to screen it at least half inch um, square screen to get the sticks and the lumps out. Um, then perlite or vermiculite, that white stuff that goes in the potting soil. And then Portland cement, Portland cement. Maybe quick crete is the same thing, I don't know. That might have aggregate in it. But anyway, it's more or less equal parts, a third, a third, and a third. You have to have at least 25% by volume, by just volume, not by weight, or you'll get all screwed up, of the Portland cement. Some people will take scoops. Two scoops of Portland cement to, to three scoops of perlite, three scoops of peat moss. If you run out of the perlite, just add peat moss. The long and the short of it is 25% cement, 75% other fluffy stuff. And what you get is uh, a material that is, is porous. It is a planter that you can just keep out all winter long. If you're in Australia, all summer long. That's a little inside joke. It seems to really make plants happy. Um, for some reason, I don't know why. It just does. And perennials will come back. I've got a lot of wild plants planted in them. But what I'm going to do, I don't want to muck up this picnic table, but I'm just going to bring this up. This has been sitting overnight. I did this last night, and it just came out of my mold. You can use a cardboard box for mold, um, Dixie cups, two liter bottles, anything, anything for a mold. And how you work it, I'm not going to get into grand details because there are so many Hypertufa videos on YouTube, but you take your mold. You line it with garbage bag material. If you're worried about it crinkling and having weird textures because it's not like a, just a smooth layer in there, it doesn't matter. It adds interest. It adds mystery to your hypertufa. You put it in there and you punch it down and you just pack it like clay. That's it. Seal it, plastic bag, and then use patience. Use patience. In this case, I took a stick started a hole, I'm going to finish my hole in here. I am also going to engage in a grand experiment that I have never seen in the world of YouTube regarding Hypertufa. I need to finish my hole through there. And this stuff is still soft after a day. I don't want to break it. There, there it is. There it is. I made my hole. This is very interesting. I'm just like breaking it down. I used a stick and poked it through there, but you're going to have like, you know, some stuff at the bottom. You just break it out. It's still soft. And as you will see in the videos, you can do all sorts of stuff. I'm not going to haul this around because it's delicate, but it has some pores and pockets. It actually looks like the stone. You could take a rasp, you know, while it's still soft after just curing for a day. Um, texture it. You could take a wire brush and scrape it, knock it off and make it look rough like a stone. But that is not the story. The story is that I am going to cure it in another way. I know for a fact that there are people that are skilled in concrete work, Panther, watching this. And hopefully you can give me some input on this idea. Now, as concrete is curing, it has to have moisture. It's a chemical change, not a physical change. Let me just put this gently up here. It's rather delicate so far because it hasn't cured yet. A chemical change, not a physical change. And from what I read, my research, I done did my research, um, 
that if you do concrete work underwater, it can actually be stronger than you know terrestrial work like laying a sidewalk. So what I'm going to do before your very eyes is get a start on this, I am going to take a fine instrument. Rob, does this bring back any memories? Inside. The new bog trotters. Where'd you get the name for the new bog trotters? We stole it from the old bog trotters. And I'm going to take my bass drum. This is actually a wash tub bass. And I'm going to line it with garbage bags. There are two in here. So I want to make sure it doesn't leak. And for those concrete workers out there, what is the input on this? The implications of what I'm going to do. I'm going to lay my hyper tufa, my super hyper tufa pot in here gently. And why do I have two garbage bags and a wash tub? Whoa, that was a bad sound. That's all right, I've got nerves of steel. I'm actually going to fill the two garbage bags, which, you know, it's two layers, it's one thing, one unit with water, and I'm gonna let that sit in a watery bath, a watery grave of sorts, for a couple weeks. And that is why I want input from you concretists out there. You concretions. Do you think it'll work? Do you think that actually curing us two weeks in water will make that stronger than just the typical way where you have it in plastic and spritz it with a water bottle every so often? That's a question. It's the first time on YouTube. This is the first hyper tufa video on YouTube where we did a water cure. I'm number one. Okay, now on to the airplanes. It's curious. It's curious to me as a person of 2019, looking back at World War I airplanes, that, uh, that immensely fast evolution of airplanes from the Wright Flyer, Otto, Lilienthal, or what have you, you know, Glenn Curtis, to the warbirds of World War I. They were amazing. You see occasional videos on YouTube of people that are trying to reconstruct this. They are having a hard time reconstructing planes that were mass produced. I say that with a caveat. Um, in World War, in 1915, 16, 17, um, that's amazing. Now these people would fly these things. Horrible ground handling. You know, they didn't have tricycle gear um, back there. These biplanes and triplanes like the DR-1 and the SOP with triplane. And there was even a, an Italian quadroplane. Um, just main gear and tail draggers. You know, not only that, it's not like starting the engine on your car. You just turn the key and it ready, ready to go. They had these pumps to pressurize the, the the gas tanks and then some of them had propellers on the struts that would power compressors that would do that they had to control the magnetos in some cases you know they had actual rotary engines not radials but rotary um, where the the propeller was bolted to the cylinders and the the, the crankshaft was stationary so you had that horrible uh, that horrible gyroscopic effect long story short they not only had to build these incredible machines, look at the Albatross, the construction of the Albatross series. You know, the, 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 the camel, the stop with camel, and all these things. They had to actually, you know, keep the engine running. Sometimes they didn't have like throttles, they just had on and off. You know, that's amazing. Second airplane thing. What is the airplane that holds the current speed record Four, this is gonna be this is gonna baffle you. It's gonna really make you think. What is the airplane that holds a the current speed record for a piston engine propeller driven aircraft? Yes, it is a P fifty one D, the Voodoo, highly modified, but an airplane built in um, I forget what city in California in nineteen forty four holds the the record uh, five hundred and fifty miles an hour. Or there and about that we have not been able to build a piston engine propeller driven airplane that could beat the p-51 the mustang that's amazing you may argue with me and say john you know it's highly modified it has a, a turtle deck and not a bubble you know they changed the fuselage a little bit but basically the record holding airplane was built in 1944 the p-51 so if if you want to 
say that the Focke Wolf 190 or you know the Messerschmitt 109 is the best airplane. Let's see you at the air races. They are uncontroversial. Anyway, that's enough of that. I really am intending to get some input as far as curing concrete. In this case, hypertufa, super hypertufa. And also promoting our, our wash tub band, the new bog trotters. Have a good one. I tied you up long enough. Thank you for watching.